part A wants us to prove this equation right here. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to quantize angular momentum. Now, because this is it going in an orbit, a circular orbit, we'll use the formula that the mass times the velocity times the radius is the angular momentum. In this case, the mass is going to be the mass of the Earth. So that's why I have this capital M and this subscript. E right here. This is the mass of the Earth. And we'll set that equal to n times h bar. And h bar is simply Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. We'll go ahead and rearrange this equation and solve for the velocity so that we get velocity is equal to n times h bar divided by the mass of the Earth times the radius. The next thing we need to do is set the gravitational force equal to the centripetal force. And if we go ahead and expand what those forces are, the gravitational force is simply the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Sun divided by the separation distance between the two. And we squared that value, so R squared. And we set that equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. The mass will be the mass of the Earth. Let's go ahead and expand what the A sub C is, or the centripetal acceleration. We can rewrite that as V squared over R. We can go ahead and cancel the mass of the Earth on both sides of the equation and one of the R variables on both sides of the equation so that it gets reduced down to this form right here. We'll go ahead and substitute in this velocity that we found in the first part into this variable right here so that we'll get this form right here. Next, we'll go ahead and cross multiply and then we'll go ahead and expand this squared term right here so that we get this form down below. We'll cancel out one of the r's and we'll get this form right here. Then all we have to do now is just solve for the r variable. We'll isolate that and this should go ahead and verify or prove what part a wanted us to find. For part b, once again, we'll take this radius equation right here and we'll go ahead and solve for n in this case. So we'll go ahead and move the variables over, take the square root, and this is the form that we'll get right here. Afterwards, we'll simplify this, and the square, we'll take the square root of these squares so that we can pull it out front. And now we can go ahead and substitute in the values for these variables here. Now the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. H bar is Planck's constant. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds divided by 2 pi. The gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And the radius or the distance between the sun and the earth is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. You punch that all into the calculator and you'll get an n value of 2.53 times 10 to the 74th power. Part C is asking to find the distance between the orbit for quantum number n and the next orbit out from the sun corresponding to the quantum number n plus 1. All that is, it's going to be the distance between the orbits, so we'll represent that with a delta r value. And we already know what r is going to be. This is what the r equation is right here. And we'll go ahead and substitute in this value for n. We were told the next quantum number would be n plus 1, so that's what we went ahead and did right here. We plugged that value in. Afterwards, we're going to factor out this h bar squared over the gravitational constant times the mass of the sun times the mass of the earth squared. We'll factor this term out so that we're left with this form right here. We'll go ahead and expand the binomial, the n plus 1 squared, so that we get n squared plus 2n plus 1. We can go ahead and cancel the n squares right here so that we're left with this 2n plus 1 term. Now we can go ahead and plug in the values for these variables. Recall that we found what the value of n was when we were doing this in part b. But just as a reminder, it was 2.53 times 10 to the 74th. Now, you'll want to go ahead and plug in these numbers into your calculator, but if your calculator is unable to handle this, these high orders of magnitude, don't worry, I have you covered. We'll find that the delta R value is 1.18 times 10 to the negative 62 meters. Part D is asking us to discuss the significance of our results. 
Well, I'll just read this out loud. This number is much smaller. This number right here, 1.18 times 10 to the negative 62, is much smaller than the radius of an atomic nucleus. So the distance between quantized orbits of the Earth is too small to observe. So that is the significance of doing all these problems, is to compare this R value or delta R value to the certain radii you would find in like hydrogen atoms, for instance. So hopefully that helps, and thanks for watching.